from the frat house. I thought originally that little mini series with the focus on the monthly, weekly, and daily views in the DIY fish life mapping inserts uh, were just going to be those three, and that's it. But I got thinking about it last night, and um, while I was filming that daily video, it occurred to me that doing a focus on indexing table of contents and archiving and retrieval might be a good idea. Uh, so that is what this video is going to be. And then I have a couple more ideas percolating too. So we have already looked at indexing. Haha, <laughs> there goes the camera. Sorry guys. Uh, we did already look at indexing a little bit in the focus on the daily view. Uh, but I'll review that a little bit and then show you how I do my table of contents and how I archive my pages both physically and using Evernote so that they're all searchable. Both the the typing that I put in on each note in Evernote is obviously searchable, but then the text itself, the written text uh, for Evernote Premium users, that is searchable as well. So I will uh, put all the links for everything down below and uh, let's show you how I do it. Okay, thanks guys, bye-bye. All right guys, here is a focused look at indexing, contents pages, and archiving, um, at least the way I do it. Like I said before, you know, a million different ways to use these, so I'm sure there are a million different ways to do your indexing and your contents and your archiving. Um, the way I do it is, as I said in the Focus on the Daily Pages video, anything that I mark on either of these pages that I know I'm probably going to want to reference later. I may not, but if I think, yeah, I might need that later, I mark it in the index bar over here. And that refers you to the index page back here. The index page, all I did was, it's just a piece of cardstock. I took a notes page, you know, one of these, just, I printed a spare one and filled in the colors that I wanted on that full notes page, labeled them, and then I just trimmed it, put it on the edge of the cardstock, and I just covered it with clear tape. It's not fancy schmancy, but it works for me. So this is just in case you forget what your colors represent and also to make sure that you're consistently marking in the same boxes on your daily pages. If you're gonna mark something in brown and you do it in the fourth box down on one page and accidentally on you know, the sixth box down on the other page, finding things is gonna be a little more difficult. Your eye might be caught by the brown color and it might not. So this helps you keep all of that particular color in the same box on each page. Um, the other thing I do when I'm indexing something, generally, I don't always do it, but most of the time, I make a tiny note below that particular color because while purple may stand for you know work stuff and projects pertaining to other people in my color coding, that could mean a lot of things. That could mean tech coding, that could mean you know, a website for a business or for an individual that I'm working on. So much as I said, uh, as I said in the video before, uh, probably it was the weekly and the daily, um, while I use blue to color code for the boys, there are a lot of boys. So I use their first initial to indicate which kid I'm talking about. I do the same with the other colors. Purple is generally work stuff for me. So depending on who that work stuff might be for, I mark it in a note underneath it. One piece of advice I will give you, if you're going to have, even if you're not going to have multiple colors, but especially if you're gonna have a lot of colors in your color coding system, and this is working fine for me, but if I could go back and redo it, I would spread these out more. And Fish does say that. Um, if you look at her website where she shows you how to make an index page marker, she does, uh, make a comment on there about making sure you leave enough space between each color. See, all this space I could have been using, I could have more space in between each color to make these little notes because especially this purple one, some days I have more than one thing or project or business or person to indicate on there. Same with the blue for the boys. Sometimes there are things on that page that pertain to more than one or two boys and because I've only skipped one line in between my blue and orange, I'm a little bit limited there. I don't mind it, it generally doesn't affect things, but it, it really could. So, you know, food for thought, if you're making your index page marker, maybe leave more space um, in between each color so that you have room for little notations in between each color over here, if you feel you're gonna need that room. Like I said, this is working fine. I generally don't have every last color, I don't think I've ever had a day where I've had every last color filled in, so. 
that is how I index. And the purpose for that being that especially when I go through the pages that I've already archived and I'm looking for something in particular, I can refer to my contents page, or if I know roughly when it is, especially if I'm in a hurry, I can just fan my pages out and flip through them and see real quickly what days I have what marked in those little sides, side indexes. See that? So that's the purpose of indexing that stuff. Now what I do during my weekly review each week, as far as the contents go, is I will look at Monday. I'll check, as I said in that weekly review video a while back, you know, check any tasks that I need to move forward to Tuesday or that just are not going to get done at all. If it's something that I'm just not going to do at all, period, or if, you know, it's something I'm just not going to do this week, I hand a little differently. If it's something I'm not going to do at all, I make sure I cross it off on here so I don't carry it forward to the following weekly chart. If it's something I think, okay, there's no way I'm going to, I put it on Monday, I'm not going to get it done this week, I'll just slap it on a post-it note real quick and put it on the upcoming week, you know, somewhere in here so that when I flip to it, I'll see it, I can add it to the weekly chart accordingly. Okay, so that is, let me go back to the day I want, goodness, sorry guys. So as I'm doing that weekly review, you know, I'll check those tasks. I will check any notes I have over here, especially something I may have already indexed. I'll double check that I didn't miss something that I wanted to index and that I didn't do it. And then I will look at my page number, and usually they're always odd just because that side, the way I numbered them, happens to be the odd page. And I will say, okay, that was notes for that particular website. I want to be able to find that again. I go to my contents page, and I write it in the color that pertains to it in my color code. So for that particular one, man, my brain, you guys, I keep losing my spot. Page 117, I wrote it in right here. I have notes for that website on page 117. It's in purple because it's a project that pertains to work stuff. I have two quotes that I wanted to incorporate into the book, so I just wrote two quotes in brown on page 117 because that's the color I used to indicate stuff for the book or writing. And I paid this bill on page 117. So I write it in green on the contents page. So this way, and I do have some of 2013 on here. I started using this in no, this system in November, and I didn't want to reprint um, everything and start a fresh 2014 because I had only used up this much of it for 2013. So I just indicated 2014 here and then just started keeping track. And you can see the kind of stuff, you know, where my January monthly page is, uh, website support notes for a site that I used to track my analytics, um, more support notes for that site, you know, uh, an order we placed for one of the boys, um, some Amazon orders, some bills I paid. If I find a really fantastic quote, I write fantastic quote and indicate the page number. <clears throat> and that is how I use my contents pages because I pull all this out and I archive it in a separate binder. Let me grab that for you. I can't believe I didn't grab it beforehand. Hold tight. Okay, here is the binder that I'm using this year for archiving. Um, it's a Franklin Covey that I bought from a very nice woman uh, from the uh, Filofaxi ad spot. And you'll see right away, I just pull everything out of this when I'm archiving it. I make sure it's in that contents page and I put it into this. I don't take anything out. My monthly pages go, any post-it notes that I have slapped in here for stuff, I leave them and I put things together by week. So January week one is all folded together and in here. Okay, January week two, I even leave the tabs for the pages on there, is all together and in here. And I just leave it all together. And this is one of the things I love about archiving these. The, just the way they're set up, that weekly page, page folds right around the daily pages for the whole week. I know I have all of week four or whatever week all together, and it's taken care of. So that is how I archive them. So if I need something from here, okay, let's say I want, let's say I want to find that quote and I know it's on page 47. Well, I will go back here and kind of start by guessing. And you know, if I was smart, I just had this idea. If I was smart, because I have these together per week, I would mark right on this tab or on one of these pages what page numbers are included in that week. Ha, huh, see, doing videos even gives me my own ideas. <laughs> I will do that from here forward, however, for the time being, I just pop a week open, I kind of guess, I figure, okay, there's page 40. There's page 47, there's the quote I wanted. So it's pretty darn quick. 
but I'm going to add my page numbers, probably on the tabs, uh, probably honestly just because I'm me and I have to repeat everything, we have backups of backups, I'll probably put it on the tab and either up in this corner or in this side because this would all pertain to this particular packet. So there's a tip for you, put your page numbers right on your tabs or on your weekly packet. And that is how I find stuff, that's how quick it can be, seriously. I do also um, upload stuff to Evernote and if you go back I have a video from uh, it was probably August or September, and I'll link to it down below that shows you how I archive stuff in Evernote. Uh, at the time, I was using a monthly index in some daytimer monthly pages, so that was how I was archiving. Now, the only difference in any of that process is if I see something desperately important that I know I'm going to want to go back to and that I'll probably refer to quite frequently, like, let me show you a really good example of this. Oh, where was it from? It was probably this week back here. Okay, here's a good example. Here's some work stuff that I was doing, some coding, that I had some issues um, with a bad text box and I, it was a new issue. This is something I haven't come across before and when I have come across it, I know a quick fix for it that was not working. So I made a note of it right here and that I took a picture of and I uploaded it to Evernote. If you go back and watch that video, you'll see how I do that um, so that I could refer back to that quickly. I put all those in one folder in Evernote and that way I don't, uh, I don't forget. Anything that um, I'm going to refer to quite a bit like, oops, sorry, <clears throat> here's a good one. I have looked at this so many times since I wrote it down where I had some all support notes written on page 3 and page 5. I know it's an early number so it's going to be toward the beginning of the year. So rather than me getting up and going to the other desk and pulling this binder out every time I want to look at those notes, see all these notes I made for that website? I have looked at this so many times. So I took a picture of it, uploaded it to Evernote. And because Evernote has text recognition, if I can't quite remember how I saved this note, I know, you know, it's about some all and it was about site admin. I can search for that. This page will pop up. So while I have a hard copy of it saved, archived, sometimes either I'm not here when I'm working on it, so I don't have this physical copy with me, or I know darn well that it's, you know, in Evernote and it's on my phone or on the tablet and I can just look it up quickly. So that is the other way I archive information. Um, and if you if you guys want, let me know. If you want kind of an updated idea of how I do that archiving um, in Evernote, I will do that. Uh, their layout has changed a little bit with the last couple of updates. It's a beautiful app to use. Um, if you guys want to see that, let me know. Otherwise, just refer to that other uh, Evernote video because it's basically the same process. Their homepage um, on the app just looks a little different. So that is how I use my contents pages. Same as always, you got anything to say, let me know. Okay, guys, talk to you later. Bye-bye.